Welcome to the Financial Freedom Secrets Show. This is your host, Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, helping business owners create financial freedom faster by mastering the language of money. Want to see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom? Complete our 40-point financial performance scorecard at wealthhealthcheck.com.au. That's wealthhealthcheck.com.au. The average score for most business owners is 18 out of 40. So complete the scorecard now and see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom. G'day guys, this is Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, and we're here for another episode of the Financial Freedom Secrets Show. And I have Lauren Jones here from Lauren Jones Buyers Agency, and we're going to be talking all about the property market, specifically in Brisbane. Now, Lauren is a, an expert in the Brisbane property market. Uh, it's been a hotspot hot for a long time, but there's a lot of different perspectives out there. So I wanted to kind of unpack um, Lauren's journey, what's kind of going on in the market right now, and why business owners should be working with a buyer's agent in order to work towards achieving their property goals, whether it be home ownership or whether it be through investments. So Lauren, thanks for making the time. How are you doing? Very good, Jackson. Happy to be here. Great to great to have you here, mate. So for those who don't know you, give us a little bit of your origin story. Uh, how did you get into property? And ultimately, how did you then launch your own business? Yeah, okay. Um, so I guess my first real adult job, so to speak, I uh, was actually with a debt collection agency. Um, and while I was working there, I kind of became on this quest to understand how I could, I guess, become successful and make a lot of money. I remember listening or reading to something that said, find two topics you love and learn absolutely everything you can about them. The two topics I picked were finance and property. Um, and it kind of helped that I was already in the finance space, in the collections um, industry. So once I decided that, I ended up moving into mortgage broking, absolutely loved it. The one thing that I felt was missing though was actually the property side of things because as a mortgage broker, you give the customer their loan and then they come back with a property. You've really got no say or really a right in what kind of property they're buying. You're there to give them the loan. Um, so from then on, I made a bit of a mission to find a company that I could work for where I could help people make better property investment decisions. Uh, that led me to contact a bunch of uh, property investment firms that I'd listened to their podcasts, read their books, uh, and eventually a company responded and they said, look, we don't actually have mortgage brokers, but would you like to come be a buyer's agent associate with us? I took the job and never looked back. It was just, yeah, perfect for me. Love it, mate. Fantastic. And you said, what, what kind of urged you to then go out of that environment working with a leading property advisory to then launch your own business? So I worked with that company for about 12 months. I really learned almost everything there was to know about property. We, I was part of almost 150 purchases in just 12 months, which is massive wow. volume. And really, you learn how to be a buyer's agent through exposure and through transactions. Every, every single purchase, you learn something. Uh, I then moved to another buyer's agency and really what I learned there was how to build a brand and how to build a business. So how to bring business in, um, nurture clients uh, and all that kind of stuff. I then essentially took the two of those things that I'd learned, the property side and the business side, put them together and started my own business. Um, and I absolutely love it. I love being a business owner. Um, I never wanted to be a business owner, but here we are. I love what I do. I love my team. Um and everything's just kind of fallen into place. <laughs> I love that, mate. That's fantastic. Look, I'm a big believer. Obviously, all of the, the listeners and watchers of our show are all business owners. When you're good at what you do and you're passionate and you're driven, you should work for yourself uh, because you can be the master of your own destiny. And it's great to see that that's coming to fruition for you. And look, my philosophy on this is that as a business owner, we need to maximize our profit and we should be then taking that profit and turning that into personal wealth. And you and I both believe that we should do that primarily through property. I think property is one of the best wealth creation vehicles that business owners can use. But business owners are time poor. So for those who are listening or watching and maybe they haven't worked with a buyer's agent, they're not 100% sure what a buyer's agent does. Can you give me a bit of a crash course on your approach to buyer's agency and how you help your clients build wealth through property? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as far as the owner-occupied space, we do buy about uh, two-thirds to 75% of our properties for owner-occupiers. Uh, a lot of the time they are time poor. And we also work with a lot of single women as well, uh, whether or not they're time poor, lack a bit of confidence. 
uh, essentially what happens is they give us the brief of what they're looking to buy and we go out and find it for them. We'll help them understand what's the value of the home. We'll undertake all of the negotiations for them. Uh, if the property's online, so it's on realestate.com, our job really is to conduct all the due diligence and get their offer to the top of the pile. Uh, in this market, you can be competing, well, in the Brisbane market, you can be competing against five, 10, sometimes 15 other offers. Um, so just to get your offer to the top of the pile and not miss out on your perfect property for five or 10 grand, that's a massive uh, reason why people do engage our services. In the investment space, it's a little bit different and it's more of an advice piece. So when people come to us looking to invest, they've already selected the Brisbane market, uh, whether that's, you know, they've been steered in that direction by someone or maybe they're local and they just believe Brisbane's going to be a great place to invest. We'll then understand a few things from them, uh, such as what's their risk tolerance? What's their um, not only maximum budget they can go to, but where's their comfort level? From that, we'll also work out what kind of rent they need as far as the bank goes, but more importantly, as far as cash flow restraints go, because it's all good and well, your broker saying you can spend $800,000, we just need a $500 a week rent. But when we actually look at that as far as a cash flow perspective, they might have to be tipping in $40,000 into the property. Some people don't even, even look into that. Um, and then we'll kind of reverse engineer and let them know what kind of property we would be recommending for them and why. Beautiful. Makes a lot of sense. Let's talk a little bit about the owner-occupied piece because I don't think it's that common, particularly in Australia, for people to engage a buyer's agent to buy their principal place of residence. And look, I'm, a, I'm an emotional person. Um, I can get very easily invested in something if I want it and I can go a little bit uh, a little bit over the top. And I used uh, a buyer's agent to help me with my dream home because I knew that was going to be a thing, right? And um, it's so easy to get caught up in it. So why do you think more people don't engage a buyer's agent to buy their home, Lauren? Like what, what gets in the way of them investing in getting that professional help when they're buying their home? In all honesty, a lot of people still don't know what a buyer's agent is mm. and that we exist. It's yeah. a lot more common in places like Sydney and Melbourne, but in Brisbane, most of the conversations I'm having with people is actually educating them on what a buyer's agent does. Mm. Now, once they understand what we do, the biggest reason people don't engage a buyer's agent is fees. It's mm. not a cheap fee for service. Um, and a lot of the time people are much more focused on that immediate money today than they are on you know, any opportunity cost or what spending that money could achieve them. I get you, mate. And look, I see this time and time again. We've had clients who have been trying to do it themselves. They've either been business owners or working busy professionals, typically have young families, and they're going out pounding the pavement every Saturday. And they're just constantly disheartened, particularly in a hot market, that they miss opportunities, miss opportunity, miss opportunities. And they could spend nine months, potentially even longer, wasted time of not getting into that property. And particularly when the markets are so buoyant, the prices are going crazy, there's potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars lost as a result of not using a buyer's agent who it might cost you what, 2% of the property price, 15, yeah, 20 grand. It's interesting. I've seen a stat a while ago. I don't know if it's still current. It's probably actually worse now, but the average mm. buyer takes nine months to buy a home. Mm. Now my longest client took nine months to buy a home. Sure. Um, and in a market like this in Brisbane, it's very competitive. On average, it's going up about maybe twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month. If you're yeah. not buying a home that month, you're going to be paying twelve to fifteen thousand dollars more the very next month. And you stack that up over a year. I've just started working with a new first home buyer, uh, and she's at seven hundred thousand. And properties she was looking at when she first started twelve months ago were five fifty. And at that point, she thought they were overpriced. Everything's expensive in hindsight, right? Um, and I think that's the thing about property is that you, you need to get in. And as long as the fundamentals are there and, and you're supported with that advice, because it can be nerve wracking, right? When you're doing it on your own, when you've got that conviction from someone like yourself, who's experienced, understands the market and can reassure you that you're getting a fair deal, then uh, it, it can help you make a lot of money in the long run. And it's just that risk, the cost of inaction. Um, that I think people are looking for bargains and you don't find bargains in a market like this, do you? No. And if you're doing it, if you're, if you are finding a bargain in a market like this and it's easy to buy, it's probably going to be a very hard property to sell down the track. Mm, yeah. There's typically something wrong, right? There's something going on. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the investment side of things, mate. 
There's been a narrative for a long time. Like I remember um, heading back probably 10 years ago now, there was a lot of kind of early adopters who were talking about the Brisbane market ready to kick off. People were already talking about Sydney and Melbourne being overpriced and saying Brisbane was going to be the next thing. And it had sat flat since basically like the early 2000s. And lots of people were like, no, Brisbane sucks. Don't, it's, it's never going to go anywhere. And then it went nuts. And then now people are talking about this idea that the Brisbane property market has done its dash and there's no more opportunity. So as somebody who's an expert on the ground, you're looking at this every day. What's your opinion on the Brisbane market and why it makes sense for certain investors? The reality is at the end of the day, it's supply and demand. We've got a massive undersupply of property, not only for sale, but for rent. And the demand is still so high. We're still getting thousands of people entering Brisbane, not just from overseas, but also interstate. People are still moving up here. Um, building, no one really wants to build anymore. Um, and the problem is, is that there's a lack of supply at the moment of established homes because when people go to sell a property, they either have to buy somewhere else, rent somewhere else, or build something else. Hmm. Now, all three of those options are very difficult at the moment. So not often people just buy a home, but if that person has to buy their home subject to sale in an incredibly hot market, it just doesn't happen. Um, and that's why I think the Brisbane property market will continue to run for a while because where is the supply going to come from? <laughs> and even yeah, things like they've just reduced our stamp duty uh, exemption for first home buyers from 500 up to 700. And that's just going to light a fire under that sub $700,000 market creating more demand we've got you know less than one percent vacancy rates no one can rent where are people going to live <laughs> yeah it makes sense and I, that, I don't see a solution in sight like it's not like the government uh, is really doing anything to aid innovation of the the fast development or the fast track of property there's no margins in it for developers at the moment so it makes a lot of sense so but i guess not every property is made equal so when you're looking for an investment for a client, what makes an investment grade property from your perspective, Lauren? A couple of things I really uh, like to consider for investment is what's the quality of your tenant going to be like and who's the person who's going to be buying the home from you? Um, and that's often guided by who's buying the homes around you as well. So I really like to be buying in, in areas with higher owner-occupied rates versus investment rates owner occupiers buy with their heart they pay an emotional price they're going to move into the home they're going to keep adding value to the home by way of renovation they're going to keep their homes and you know front uh, facade of the property much nicer than an investor will um, also in areas that have got high rates of investors all it can take is for a few properties to go on the rental market or a few too many properties to go on the rental market and you don't have enough tenants that actually want to live in those properties you're actually pushing mm. the price down um, another key thing that we really like to look at is incomes. Um, we want to be buying in areas where people can continue to pay more for property. You're going to have tenants who can continue to pay more for rent. Um, and also in times of mortgage stress, that stress, they're going to be less likely to have to fire sale their properties. One thing I find is everyone wants capital growth in property. Everyone wants cash flow in property, but it's about finding that balance. And I think as well in finding the balance, we really need to understand where their risk tolerance lies. And I find most people, maybe even 80% of the investors I talk to, they do actually have a pretty low risk tolerance. They don't want to be getting calls, you know, every other month that the tenant's not paying their rent or they've damaged the property or the property's like, there's another issue at the property. Most people do want that more set and forget kind of investment property. Um, so we do tend to buy slightly newer homes for most of our investors, maybe, you know, built in the 90s or early 2000s, where you're not putting too much money into the house as opposed to the land, and you're able to kind of create a balance between that capital growth and that cash flow. Makes a lot of sense. And what are your kind of deal breakers, Lauren? Like, what are the things that you immediately walk away from in a property? Uh, in Brisbane, flooding. That's a pretty obvious one. Yeah. Um, not only is it a risk of the water coming in, but your your insurance premiums can be huge. I've heard of $17,000 insurance premiums for $600,000 homes. Wow. Uh, high voltage power lines as well, that can really reduce the number of people that will want to buy your home from you, uh, whether it be they think it's safety risks or just because it's an eyesore. 
As far as investment goes as well, we really don't like buying on busy roads or main roads. Again, it comes down to who's going to be buying the property from you. And yeah. we we want to ensure maximum amount of people want to buy your home. Um, ideally, we would like to have three bed, two bath, two car. And that's to ensure that you're going to get a better tenant because more tenants will want to live in a home like that. Um, so they're some of the key things that we look for. Makes sense. And I guess in this market, for people who maybe don't know Brisbane or the areas that you're looking at, what's a kind of price guide starting from if somebody's looking for that, say, three bed, two bath, two car kind of property? For an investment or for an owner occupier? For an investment. 700,000 plus. Yeah. We, I, I was taking on clients 12 months ago at 550. Those properties are now worth 700. It's, we're, I'm, I'm only working with a few suburbs left under the $700,000 market that aren't in, you know, high crime, low demographic, um, investor filled locations. It's becoming incredibly difficult. I'm having to keep continue increasing that minimum investor budget that we can work with. Uh, and I also only like to, really buy houses and established houses for investors as well. So that can kind of limit us as we're not looking for the units. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Look, there's a bit of a narrative at the moment, Lauren, of people talking about the kind of debate between quantity of property and quality of property. Like I, I see a lot of people talk about the number of properties that they they own um, and not necessarily talking about the overall value of their assets. What, what's your perspective on buying a few quality properties as opposed to trying to play uh, the Monopoly board and collect as many, as many houses as we can? Absolutely. I'm definitely quality over quantity. Um, and I think what the problem is at the moment and why everyone's plugging the number of homes is because a lot of people were out buying, buying these very cheap homes. And we've had kind of like a once in a lifetime boom where all the, like the price of all properties have gone up. And these people think that, you know, they're so smart, they nailed it. But long term, I don't think it's going to be the solution. You, that most of those properties are probably in low demographic areas. You're going to have headache tenants. Uh, they might not pay their rent and you're probably going to have issues with the property. And if the market were to... Um, slow a little bit in those locations your price is probably going to start to decrease down the track mm. as well when that demand dries up yeah it's really definitely, interesting yeah definitely big on quality not quantity i agree my philosophy on this and i'm no property expert is just buy good quality property where, where affluent people want to live long term and they want to raise their families because they can have an amazing lifestyle and a, and a good commute to work and if you do that, then properties are typically always going to do well in those places, right? It's hard to do wrong. Um, and of course, there's more to it, but I think that's a, a pretty good general rule of thumb uh, that I've always tried to follow. Well, it's again, supply and demand. They're not making more of these, you know, more blue chip properties. They're just not making any more land. Um, and you're always going to have the demand because people are trying to get to those employment hubs as well. Whereas if you're buying something perhaps small regionally for a few hundred thousand dollars, you know, it's probably got a bunch of land nearby. And how many people are actually going to be moving into those locations? And are they going to continue to increase their incomes to continue to support property price increases? A bit mm. of a risk. Sometimes it, it pays off, but um, I don't not like a risk to roll those I'm, dice. Yeah, not a risk I'm prepared to take with my client's money. Yes, I get you. Now, look, we don't like to speculate or try and predict the future, but it's always good to get a bit of an understanding of what your perspective is for the future and what people might expect into the future. We've spoken about a couple of things. Obviously, there's, they're not making enough property. Vacancy rates are very low. We obviously are in a, a higher interest rate environment than we've seen in recent history. Um, and there has been some kind of talk of, although rates are on hold at the moment, they could potentially increase unless we get inflation under control. So what's your perspective on the property market, particularly over the next couple of years? Do you continue to expect these kind of double digit growth rates that we've been experiencing over the last couple of years? Do you expect things to cool off a little bit? Uh, or do you think people should kind of batten down the hatches and, and kind of prepare for some potential volatility in the short term? What's your perspective, Lauren? I'm not 100% sure on the entire Australian market as a whole. I think every city or state has very different um, fundamentals at the moment. Like Perth's obviously on fire at the moment, but that's also a market that's known to be volatile. Yes. Melbourne's got its own issues and it's just kind of treading water at the moment. Um, it seems like there's more supply than there is demand at the moment, um, but they've also had a lot of government intervention that has got them to the point where they are. If that lifts, potentially Melbourne could take off again. Um, 
Brisbane, I would say, given the supply and the demand, I think we're probably going to have a good another few years at least. I don't know what could give to cause any kind of downturn. Um, like if rates were to skyrocket, like even if rates were to skyrocket, it did that last time and we had another boom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see anything giving to stop the Brisbane market from growing. I think it will slow down because pretty much we're in a boom at the moment and that's not sustainable. Um, I think what's going to happen in Brisbane is there's this, the, the affordable housing market is really on fire at the moment. And eventually the gap's going to close between that affordable market and the mid-tier market. And then I think that next mid-tier market's going to have another run. And then the high tier market's going to have another run. Um, and that's probably just a cycle that's going to keep going until it runs out of steam or there's more supply or less demand. I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting to see. And look, I, I think the, the most important part for all of us as business owners, is how do we get as much money into good quality growth assets as possible, knowing that we are going to continue to get priced out unless we take action. Um, and I think this is the importance and why we advocate for all of our clients to work with a buyer's agent like yourself is because life gets in the way, business gets in the way. And unless you've got an expert in your corner who's given you that nudge and pushing you to take action, it is really easy for us to kind of say, oh, I'll deal with that next year. Um, it, everything will be fine. It might be fine, but you could potentially be a couple hundred thousand dollars better off if you took the right action. So, Lauren, if somebody's listened or watched this and they've liked what you had to say, um, how would you describe an ideal client for you and um, and how could you potentially help them? Um, our top three clients, we love working with first home buyers. Uh, we love working with over 55s and we actually love working with those buying and selling at the, at the same time. They're our three ideal clients. We also do work with a lot of investors above the 700K mark. And we also work with um, a lot of single women. They're really our key clients that we love to work with. Um, yeah. Beautiful. And if they wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach you and the team? Heading over to my website, uh, www.ljba.com.au uh, or Instagram at keeping up with Lauren Jones. Beautiful. Fantastic, mate. And if you had to give us one last pearl of wisdom, what would you share with us as a parting thought? Probably the opportunity cost or the cost of inaction. I see it time and time again and I see a lot of people come to me, they want the help, they, they're they ready to move and then they don't do anything and 12 months rolls around and we're having the same conversation again but now they're in a worse position than they were before. It's too easy. It's, it's all too easy. I've Action made that takers myself. and money makers. <laughs> Yes, exactly right. And I've been guilty of that myself, guys. So, and as I say on every single episode, a good idea in theory remains exactly that, just a good idea until you take action. So make sure that you take action on what we've spoken about today. If you'd like to uh, reach out to Lauren and get in touch, have a conversation, see how you could potentially advance your property strategy. Uh, Lauren, I appreciate you making the time and uh, look forward to catching up again soon. Amazing. Thanks so much, Jackson. Thanks, mate.